welcome back to the fish room so today we're going to be filling up and leak testing uh, the little tank that I want to move the mustard spot placos into and then we've also got some fish to bag up and take to their new homes today so I'm going to be showing you how I bag up some fish and then we're just going to be cleaning up a little tank ready to scape it tomorrow um, and set that up in a species specific tank for the mustard spots um, so we've got that to look forward to as well so let's pop some food around for the fish, see how everyone's doing, um, get this tank cleaned up, and then we've got some fish to take to a customer. So this is a little tank that I actually found on the side of the road, um, but it's been outside for a little while, I haven't used it. So I'm going to use a razor blade and a magic eraser. We'll give it a nice scrub up. And then I'm just going to fill it up with some RO water and leave it overnight now that it's all clean. Because I've left it out overnight during the big freezes that we've been having. Uh, where it's been getting down to minus six. And I just want to double check that the seals all work. Because I've only got one pair of these mustard spots. And if this blew out overnight, uh, the mustard spots wouldn't fare very well. So it's not necessarily too much of a big deal having water all over the floor, but these mustard spots here, that's the male in the front, and then I'm not sure whether the female uh, makes an appearance, but you can tell the males because they've got much wider head, and they've also got spikes down the sides of their tail as well, um, which are called odontodes, very fancy word for those. So odontodes are any of the spikes um, that you'll see on plecos, you can see it at a better angle there actually. Um, so these are Panaculus albumaculatus, the mustard spot plecos, and they're very commonly misidentified. Because they look a lot like things like vampire plecos, which this is a vampire pleco here. But vampire is going to get much bigger and they've got a completely different diet. So I think one of the main reasons why nobody's bred these in captivity before is because a lot of people actually have misidentified them and don't know what they are. They're closely related to things like LL002 tigers, uh, clown placos, and flash placos as well. Flash placos are probably the closest. So all of the Panaculus species, Panac meaning wood eater, and Panaculus uh, being a not very nice way of going, small Panac. So Panaculus just means a small wood eating placo. And I think the largest species gets around seven, eight inches, but most of these guys, six inches max, and that's including the tail. So this is one of our lovely L002 tigers here. So I'm just going to bag up some Corydoras and some Endla Guppies to go to a customer. Um, these are going on a local delivery so I'm going to drive these out to them. But we normally send fish uh, out overnight on an overnight courier. The trick with this is to grab the bag quickly and catch all the air in it. But then what I do is just uh, tie them up with a massive band. Some people like to tie knots but as long as you've grabbed it quickly and you've captured all that air in there, that's good to go. And then if I'm sending them overnight, I normally pop some safe and maybe some metal and glue in the bag as well. And then all of our catfish get double bagged. The best way to describe this is it's like putting on a pair of tights, uh, ladies. If you roll the end up as if you're going to pop it over the end of your toe, as if you're popping on tights, uh, they're really, really easy to just roll the other bag over it. And then you just tie it on like a second bag. 
and that makes it so that the spikes um, and all of the spines, the fins and the odd on toads of the catfish don't pierce the bag and we don't have any leaks on the way. So they're all ready to go. We've got slate curries, uh, Corydoris napoensis napo curries and a nice little trio of Santa Maria endlers. So we're back in the next day, I'm just popping some food around for everyone, the L333s are all out. And the two main ingredients I want for this tank, it has held beautifully overnight, so I'm really pleased with that. Um, we're going to want good filters, and we're going to want lots of wood in there for these panicolas to graze on. So what I've got is some foam from the pond section in the fish shop, and I've just cut this to size. I'm going to pop this at one end of the tank, and essentially this is the filter. So the water is going to flow through this wall and it's going to be returned over it. And this is called a Hamburg matting filter. This is one of my favourite designs because it scales to the size of the tank. If you've got more foam and a bigger tank, then you're going to have more foam and the filter scales to the right size. This is one of my designs of doing a airlift Hamburg matting filter. So all you need is a, a length of garden hose and you need an air pump or some sort of airline attached to a air source, which is what I've got here. This is connected to my big central system. So I've got a big air pump that provides air to all the tanks in the fish room. And there's lots of different ways of doing this, but all I do is I just drop the end of the airline down through the hose. And as I show you, when I put this in the water, you'll see the effect it has. As the air rises, takes water with it and that is literally all an airlift pipe is so as the air is uh, rising up through the pipe it wants to escape it's taking the water with it and if we have that at an angle it's going to be sucking water from the end of the hose and spitting out the other end now i normally like to just put a little right arm piece on this the hardest part of this assembly is actually getting this airline through here so just bear with me and sometimes I need some tweezers or some scissors to get it through, but this is genuinely the hardest part um, physically of what's going on here. It's just getting that airline round that 90 degree angle so that then um, we can drop it down through the hose and have that nice return through there. Some people like to pierce a hole in the bottom of the hose. That's fine, you can just pop a little uh, hole in the bottom of the hose. You can even stick an air tube, um, not an air tube, an air stone up in there. Um, which makes it a bit quieter. Anything that fits, you just need air going up that pipe from one end to the other. So I'm going to cut this to size as well because this tube is just a little bit too long. But hopefully once I've got this 90 degree on, and that's actually quite a snug fit. So let's just see what size I need in it. I really shouldn't be blunting my scissors actually, these are my aquascaping scissors and I should not be using these, I should go and get my hose peppers. Hose cutters, great investment, get some. Really, really useful. There we go. Lovely stuff. So, we've got a right, uh, right angle on this. And the airline is dropped down into it. It's probably going to be a little bit too far down in the bottom. But basically by pulling the hose higher or lower into the other hose, so pulling the airline hose higher or lower, you can adjust the flow. And also by using a valve or an another method to pinch that hose, you can lessen the flow. So you can see I can turn it right the way down and have it really, really gentle, or I can just leave it and it's really splattering away. And I actually kind of just want it splattering away for these guys because they like a lot of oxygen. So the water is going to flow through the, uh, through the sponge sorry, and up the end of that green hose. And the water is then going to be returned over the sponge um, by way of that 90 degree angle. And then it's going to return back through the sponge. So that is going to be what makes our filter. 
um, because it's a very big filter compared to if I bought a little internal in the fish shop, that would be absolutely tiny compared to the amount of sponge that we have available here. So once I've messed around with the flow a little bit more and worked out that I probably just want it on full back, um, what I'm going to do is get some cycled media out of the uh, Master Spots tank already from the filter that they've got in there. And I'm just going to drop all the cycled media down the back of this foam so that the water is flowing over the cycled media which has all of our beneficial bacteria on it already. And that means I'm going to be able to put the fish in straight away. So hopefully this makes sense. All you want to do, pop the airline down there, 90 degree angle on it, and you just want it so that you've got a wall of foam. It really is that simple. All the filter is, is water flowing over media um, and getting returned to the tank. So I'm just going to secure this with a little bit of slate to stop it uh, popping up too much. And then I actually decided to grab a, a pothos or philodendron, devil's ivy. Uh, the Americans call it pothos. And I actually just like to sit the pothos uh, on the top of the handbag mountain filter because the roots will be in the water, but the rest of the pot stays out and um, it will suck up the nitrates and be adding extra filtration to setup that we've created here. I've got this in so many of the tanks, I've done this so many times over the years, but um, we've got a nice pop here, and I'm just going to pop that in the corner. So, I mean, this has almost become a bit of a polydorium already. Now, I, I generally do try and hide the airline as well. I know it looks, uh, for a display tank, obviously, my fish room is very functional. Um, it's not, these aren't display tanks uh, per se, but I will hide that airline uh, somehow. But yeah, that, that thing seems to be working very well. So now it's time to scape it and the main reason I want to do this is because the cave that they've been using is not big enough for them. So I've got a nice piece of wood that I've taken out of uh, one of the tanks that the female's in because um, obviously I've got three females of these so I've, I've taken a piece of wood off one of those um, which I will just pop in here and I'm just going to shove it up there just to hold the filter in place while I mess about. And then I've got a cave thing. What's the best way to describe it? It's a piece of Corbo catfish root. So it's this. Um, Corbo catfish root and what I'm going to do is because they need a tapered end or they need a closed off end, I'm actually going to pop a pleco breeding cave in this. If it doesn't work I'll uh, just close off the end but I'm going to pop a pleco breeding cave in one end of these um, so that they've got wood to move on and the tannins being released which will help any eggs and they've got um, that whole length there so that the male and the female can both get in there because they're quite big fish and then we've got that nice tapered end which hopefully this might work I don't know, if it doesn't work what I'll do is I'll take that out and I'm just going to stick a piece of slate um, onto the end here but for now we'll see if this works um, and then it's kind of just a matter of scooping it So, I think we've done it. Um, yeah. So, filter stem, but I've got that pretty secure. That might be a bit too much of an angle. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I can see that way, but they can hide under this and then they can hide under there as well. It's all holding the filter up. I need to sort this airline out. But the water's too high now, so I need to siphon this down because the filter's lower. So, I need to siphon this. So now I've got the water line lower and the Hamburg mountain filters working, I'm just going to rearrange these a little bit because I'm not going to need to let this see in there. I'll just swap them around, that works. Yeah. And then I think there's a big gap underneath here as well so they can hide under there. That works quite nicely actually. Yeah. 
And then I've just got some leftover beech wood from the other day, so I'm going to be popping that in there. And we're just going to scape it and add some little details for the mustard spot to chew on. Which hopefully is going to make it look a little bit nicer in here as well, make it a little bit more of a display. And I'm probably going to have to see if I can cover up that filter as well. looking scape, you've got the filter bubbling away at the back there. Um, if you do want a quieter version of this build, um, just pop an airstone in it. it, it's a lot quieter. So yeah, yeah I better go get some fish I suppose. Um, but yeah, the filter's bubbling away, I've hidden it with this fake plant, uh, which is also out of a cycle tank that's out of one of the other tanks for the females. And then they've got all this wood to chew on. Pop us up top, sucking the nitrates out. We've got a nice big oversized filter uh, which is producing lots of surface movement, lots of oxygen, and lots of hiding places. Now, this is a functional tank, this is not a permanent 20 year hope for these guys. This is just for breeding, so I will say that as a disclaimer. And here they are. So, this is the male, he's got a much wider head than the female much thicker in the head and you can also see the spikes on his body so very very spiky i call him colonel mustard and then this is the female she's got a very pointy nose and you can see there's no spikes on the body as well she's also a bit of a smaller fish and um, he's very bulky <laughs> very normal behaviour. I have just chased him and I have uh, just swooped in and taken him out of his home that he's been in for a good couple of weeks now and he's breathing hard. That is very normal when you put an animal in a new environment. He's just panting. The same as you and me would if someone came and chased us around our house and uh, put you in a different house all of a sudden. You'd probably be panting too. The female's down the back there though. She seems good, right? So the light is pretty bright in this tank right now because um, I've got a floodlight up above them but these guys are not normally going to have a light on the tank so they're a little bit bleached out but I think this is going to work pretty well hopefully he's going to find his way into his new cave soon the female seems pretty relaxed already um, but yeah you can see he's just a little bit bleached out because the light's too bright and he's, he's a little bit stressed but these are a very feisty fish anyway he's absolutely gorgeous, love those spots So he's already started to chew on this leaf actually. So that's a good sign, yeah. So as a wood eating species, they do love wood, leaves, tannins, sticks, green wood, courgette, a whole lot, um, anything fibrous um, they will appreciate. But they will eat a variety of foods as well. And I'm pretty pleased with how this has worked out for them. Really fingers crossed for a world's first um, captive breeding, or recorded uh, captive breeding bees. And now this is how they're normally gonna be. So the light just trickles down from the tank above because they're bare bottom um, and actually he's already started to colour up really nicely really getting that lovely sparkly effect if I can get the camera to just focus on him for a second but no, really pleased with how the setup is working he's already started doing his little breeding fin wiggle so hopefully um, in the next month or so we can really condition these up and get them breeding 
always loads to get on with up the fish room so stay tuned for another video and I hope you've enjoyed today and yesterday's little project for the mustard spots. Bye bye!